So we're just going to start with a standing meditation and we're going to move from here. Um, I've been thinking about that phrase that says um, how we do anything is how we do everything. Okay, so how we do anything is how we do everything. And while we're doing this uh, opening meditation, please be breathing into the back of your lungs. So just below your rib cage sits your kidneys. Um, and a really skilled Ashtanga teacher, um, Richard Freeman, he said he talks about the wings of the kidneys and that the wings of the kidneys breathe on this, you know, they, they spread and expand on the upbeat or inhale of your breath and they downbeat on the exhale of your breath. So while I talk for a few seconds here, uh, please notice that flowing breath in the back bottom of your lungs or the wings of your kidneys. This pose is called Samasthitahi and essentially means to stand in balance. So just start to scan through your body, left and right sides, front and back, and try to bring your body with your breathing into balance. So how we do anything is how we do everything. And um, so I can be a person who moves really quickly, talks fast, um, you know, does things fast. Um, maybe even uh, too fast at times, clumsily, um, you know, or even into anxiety, pushing and pushing and pushing. And so, um, you know, I could do that with my yoga practice and I could push and move fast and go, go, go. But I want to use this space, at least this is me and my practice. I want to use this space to um, move slowly and mindfully. Right? If I can practice yoga that way, perhaps I can um, take that into the rest of my life, right? A single pointed focus, uh, doing one thing at a time, doing one thing at a time and doing it mindfully. So we're going to let our focus today be on these wings of the kidneys, the back of the lungs and on moving slowly, hopefully so that we set up this state of mindfulness for the rest of our day. Okay, last big breath here. Wings of your kidneys expanding on your inhale. Softly flowing down on your exhale. Okay, so tone your belly button towards your spine. Lift your pelvic floor. With an inhale, reach your arms up overhead. Almost like a hollow body, keep your belly toned. And as you exhale, bring your hands down to your heart. Do that two more times as you inhale, reach your arms up, tone your belly towards the spine. The shoulder blades can pull down your back. Hands to heart as you exhale. Maybe you can let your eyes notice something in front of you. Let your gaze fall upon something. Okay, now push down into your right foot and just lift your left knee into your chest. Squeeze your inner thighs towards center. Maintain this lift at the pelvic floor. And again, breathe into your kidneys. Okay, from here, we're gonna slowly bend our right knee. And I want you to step this left leg back, right? So we're moving in slow motion, stepping that foot towards the back of your mat, if you can hover it for a second. And then place your foot down and bend your back knee. Okay, keep squeezing your inner thighs towards center. And then again, on an inhale, breathing into the wings of the kidneys, take your arms up. Okay, press your feet to the floor. So start activating through your legs and then enjoy the beat of your kidney wings, right? Filling up and expanding, right? Soaring on your inhale and on your exhale, just relaxing that down beat. Exhale, bring your hands to your hips. Inhale, lengthen your back leg and extend, stretch the foot. And then exhale, hover your knee just over the floor. Okay, inhale to lift, you can straighten the legs. And exhale to hover knee just over the floor. Squeeze your glutes towards center. Inhale, extend. Good, exhale, hover your knee. Keep the hips balanced towards the front of your mat. Two more. 
Last one. Okay, touch your hands to the floor, extend your back leg, step your right foot back into a plank pose, pause for a moment with your shoulders over your wrists, and then even here, feel your upper arm bones broaden away from one another. Feel those wings of the kidneys beat up on, or beat open on your back. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Take three breaths. Let your chin tuck in towards your chest. Draw your shoulder blades down your back. Fix your gaze, perhaps between your knees or at your thighs. And then one more breath. From here, lift your heels high, see the top of your mat. You might want to jump. Some of us will take a big step forward. And then on an inhale, lift up halfway. Here's a great place to feel that expansion in the back. Lengthen from the crown of your head to your sit bones. And on your exhale, fold. I'm just going to do minor folding today. <laughs> you can do major folding if you like. Okay, push your feet to the floor, inhale, rise up, keep that hollow body feeling, and answer your heart as you exhale. Root into your left foot, lift your right knee, squeeze your inner thighs towards center. Okay, and then slowly, mindfully bend your left knee, step the right foot back. You should be, if you're feeling in control, you should be able to hover that heel back behind you. Right, like at any point as you're dropping it towards the floor, you're in balance. Okay, touch that foot down and then bend your back knee. Here we'll reach the arms up. Okay, so let your breath fill more into the back body. Right, we all know how to breathe into the upper chest. We all know how to breathe into the top of the lungs, into the front of the lungs. It usually takes a bit of mindfulness to breathe into the back. Okay, take your hands to your hips, straighten your legs, stretching your back foot on your inhale, and as you exhale, hover your knee. Square your hips towards the front of your mat. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale, exhale. Okay, keep your breath moving, keep your hips squaring, tuck your tailbone under when you lower. This is our last one. Good. Okay, from here, place your hands to the floor. Step your left foot back, okay? Squeeze your inner thighs together and now roll over onto the outer edge of your right foot, side plank pose. Okay, if that's challenging for you, uh, feel free to drop your bottom knee to the floor for a supported side plank. Otherwise, we're gonna squeeze our inner thighs together Feel your side belly muscles, your obliques hugging the right side. Lift your bottom hip off the ground as high as you're able. Three times as you exhale, let this left arm up, flow underneath you. And then inhale, open it back up. Really feel some stability in your right shoulder. Last one, exhale. Good, inhale. Nice, we're gonna turn to the floor plank pose and then just drop your left knee to the ground. Okay, extend your right leg once you get there. Fire up through your right glute. Draw your belly button towards your spine to fill up through your low back and then reach your left arm forward. Try not to let your back collapse. So notice again the wings of the kidneys and let yourself feel full. Notice what the mind does when asked to move slowly like this. Can you hold your center, not only physically, but mentally? Good, place your hand down, right knee down, downward facing dog. Okay, three breaths, take your gaze towards your knees, towards your thighs. Broaden your shoulder blades on your back. Hug your shoulder blades towards your waist and push down through the inner edges of your hands. Good. 
Okay, forward to your plank again. Root into your right arm, or, I'm sorry, your left arm and squeeze your inner thighs together. And then roll to your left side. Okay, right arm up for side plank. Variation, you can drop your left knee to the floor. So hug the left side belly muscles towards the spine. Let your oblique muscles wrap the left side of your core. Breathe here, and then as you exhale, keep the core stable as you lower that right arm underneath, and then inhale, open it up. Exhale, lower the arm underneath. Inhale. Good, again, maintaining a sense of center or balance. Good, we're gonna lower our hands to the floor. Okay, drop your right knee down, extend your left leg. Okay, now draw your belly button up towards the spine and feel your low back fill up. Even feel your low rib cage knit together. Reach your right arm forward. For ease in your neck, you can look down at the floor. And see if you can simply focus on your deep breath. Find the wings of the kidneys and find that expansive feeling that comes from breathing into the back. Let your muscles work. Good. Place everything down. Downward facing dog. Three breaths again. Feel your uh, biceps roll forward. Your elbow creases roll forward while still keeping the pointer finger and thumb rooting down. Can you breathe more into all parts of your body? Can you feel your body all at one time as you breathe in this last breath here? Good, we're gonna walk our way up to the top of our mat. I didn't mention this before, but if you brought blocks to your yoga mat, you might wanna grab those now. If you don't have them, we'll get through this just fine as well. From the top of your mat, lengthen your spine, breathe into the back body, tuck your chin in, lengthen from the crown to the pelvic floor. Fold as you exhale. Good, tone your belly, come up with a strong flat back, hollow belly as you reach up, inhale. Hands to your heart as you exhale. Good, root down into your right foot again, Pick your left knee up. This time, can you interlace your fingers around your shin and pull that knee up towards your chest? Root from your inner right thigh down into the floor. All right, try to keep your mind focused. How we do anything is how we do everything. Good, so now, Let's send that left leg back again. This time, we're gonna keep our hips squared towards the floor, and we're gonna keep that left leg up. Lift your inner left thigh higher than the outer thigh. Turn your left hip towards the floor. Breathe into the wings of the kidneys here. For three, two, one. As we step down, Okay, you're gonna step your toe to the back of your mat, place your heel and pivot on your feet so you're facing the long edge of your yoga mat. Continue your pivot to the back of your mat, lift your right heel. Okay, tone your belly towards your spine, lean into your left foot, lift your inner right thigh. Good, warrior three pose. Let your inner right thigh lift higher then your outer right thigh, turn the right outer hip down. Find the wings of your kidneys and let your back feel full, let your mind feel focused. Good, slowly bend your left knee and then sweep your right knee, so reversing that flow up into the chest, grab your shin, root down from your inner left thigh into the inner edge of your left 
foot. Good. So we're going to release the right knee. Okay, step it to the back of your mat. Make the transition to the long edge of your mat. And then we're going to turn our right foot forward. Angle the left toes in. Legs will stay straight here for triangle pose. If you have a block and want to use it, you could grab that. I'm going to reach in towards my shin or my ankle or a block for triangle pose. Okay, work with pelvic floor engagement. Work with your belly toning back. Feel the front of the rib cage knit in. Okay, so we keep the front ribs from jutting forward, draw them in and down, but then broaden through the back body. Oftentimes, I'll see people in triangle pose kind of crouching forward. So if that feels like you here, can you lean your spine, okay, towards the back edge of your mat? Okay, now put a soft bend in your front knee, fire up your left core, and then reach your right arm straight forward towards the front of your mat. Okay, really fire up through your inner thighs and hug your heels towards one another. If this is okay, reach your top arm up and over. Good, feel your core activate. Again, lean your spine towards the right edge of your mat, stay. Good, come on up, exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Okay, we're gonna spin our left heel up off the ground and turn forward. Okay, from here, go ahead and bend your front knee. So if very flexible, you can keep that back leg straight. If working with um, a tighter quad, a tighter psoas, or anything in the low back, you can bend your back knee, reach your arms up. Okay, so we're gonna practice now an up bend, lifting the chest towards the sky while keeping that full breath in the kidneys. So as we lean into a little back bend, can you keep the back body feeling full, right? Don't cage up your kidney wings. So asking for a little more subtle attention today, breathe into the bottom back of your lungs. Let that stay full even in a back bend. Okay, on a big exhale, touch hands to the floor, either side of your front foot, and then we're going to step back plank pose. Scoop your tailbone towards your heels here. Let your low back be full. Okay, you can keep your knees up, or for varied levels, you can drop your knees to the floor. Keep your belly toning and lower towards the chaturanga, bend the elbows, pause. Can you breathe into the back of your kidneys here? Press up, okay, and do that two more times. Lower as you exhale, breathe into the back. Press up, okay, one more. If you're just learning this or just starting to train the shoulder strength, you can bend your elbows just two inches, okay, that's fine too. Lower all the way to the ground, okay, inhale, first cobra of the day. So the hands are by the middle ribs. Tuck your tailbone into the floor and lift. Okay, and then from here, we're gonna to transition to reach our arms back. So your arms can lift up maybe parallel to the floor if they're able to go that high. If the flexibility in the shoulders is there to clasp your hands, go ahead and clasp your hands here. I'd right, imagine your hands are gently tugging towards your feet. Now, can you find the wings of the kidneys here, or are they all closed off? What does it feel like to breathe into the bottom ribs on your back now? Okay, release your hands. Now take your hands forward. Okay, we'll have a little rest here. Place your forehead on the ground. Okay. 
Okay, we're gonna pull our hands in. The outer edges of your hands can press the floor. Tuck your tailbone down. And we're gonna lift up opposite arm and leg. So doesn't matter which, just make sure leg and arm are opposite. Okay, push the hip points into the floor and then lengthen arm forward, toe back. Exhale, lower it down. Inhale, the other side. Okay, so again, you're lifting up opposite arm and leg. Everything that's touching the floor, root it down stronger. Everything that's lifting with an inhale, lift it higher. Good. Okay, now anchor the tailbone into the floor. Can you engage and lift the feet up? Lift your arms up too. Try not to close off the lower back or the middle back. Breathe into the kidneys. Good. Feel your wings spread and expand. Okay, we'll take hands by the low ribs. Tuck your toes. So from here with toes tucked, straighten the legs. Lift your knees up off the floor. Let your hips be the first thing to lift up and press into a plank. Down dog as you exhale. Can you let your mind focus on one thing? The one thing I generally choose to focus on in yoga is the sensation of my breath. You just notice where it goes when you inhale and where it goes when you exhale. That's it. Good. From here, go ahead and bend your knees. Walk your way up to the top of your mat. Okay, halfway lift. Feel the back fill up. Feel your breath fill up throughout the muscles and ribs of your back. Okay, fold as you exhale. Maybe you even shake your head here or nod, yes, no. You don't have to switch on your mat, but I'm going to so I can keep facing you. Okay, so at the top of our mat, we're gonna step our right foot back. Okay, so left foot forward into triangle pose. So the front thigh rotates externally. I'm turning my knee forward towards my toes. My back heel is angled outward, toe a little bit forward, and I'm turning my back thigh in towards center, rotating the center of my back thigh forward. Okay, here if you wanna grab your ankle, shin, or a block, Go ahead and extend your top arm. Okay, so let it be a full body pose. Okay, let there be no part of your body that's offline, right? Not activated, not working, right? Not mindful and feeling. Sometimes when I breathe, I think about expending my breath from my lungs into all my limbs, down into the feet, so I can feel the whole body. Again, lean your spine towards the back edge of your mat, or the, the, it's the left edge of your mat now. Good, as we exhale, we're gonna bring our hands to the heart at center and spin your right heel up off the ground. Okay, from here, I'm going to lean forward and pick that back foot up for a warrior three, tone the belly in towards the spine. Okay, and place that back foot to the floor. Okay, that was the test. Did you notice that was out of order? <laughs> okay, we're gonna bend our back knee. Again, if your hip flexors are really open, if your low back feels really comfortable, you can extend your back leg. Um, if your quads are tight, if your psoas is on the tighter side, or if you have any low back issues, you can bend the back knee. Okay, here we'll reach our arms up. Good. Okay, find breath in the wings of the kidneys. Squeeze your inner thighs towards center and even squeeze your glutes a little bit to stabilize the pelvis. 
Keep the low belly tone, and then feel your breath fill up into the torso, not just front, but back too. And then see if, can you start to take an up bend, or maybe more traditionally we call them back bends. Let your focus be on the wings of the kidneys. So even as we lean back, don't collapse the wings. One more breath, fully inhabiting your pose. On your exhale, touch hands to the floor. This time, we're gonna step our right foot up to the top of our mat and widen your feet, okay? We'll come to a squat. Okay, so a couple different ways you can squat. If you have a block, you can put your block underneath your sit bones. That's a nice supported way um, to squat. If your knees or your hips don't bend like this, your squat might be um, kind of more of a higher sumo squat. You'll have to work harder in your legs. You can widen your feet more. Okay, so either way we're coming to this pose, we're gonna press the elbows into the inner knees. Activate and pull up from your pelvic floor, lengthen through the crown of your head. Feel the full expansiveness of your breath. Okay, we're gonna place our hands to the floor. You're gonna lift the sitting bones up. You can turn your feet forward. Okay, lengthen your spine here. Feet maybe hips width apart. And then exhale, let yourself take a deeper fold. So you might fold quite deep into your legs. Most of you know I'm kind of recovering from some back stuff and so I'm keeping my folds pretty mild right now. But whatever the depth of your fold is, breathe it fully. Good. Take your hands to the floor, step it back, downward facing dog. Okay, so root the inner left thigh to the floor and then lift the right leg up. Keep your right hip closed. Good, and then turn your right hip open. So different version. Okay, both inner thighs now lengthening. Lift your outer right heel to the sky. Root your inner left heel to the floor. Okay, you're gonna bend your right knee, and as we exhale, bring that knee towards your right upper arm. Pause. Good, round your spine towards the sky. And then shift that knee straight down the middle of your mat. Okay, hover your shin a little closer to the floor, and then fire up your core and lift your knee up. Lower, lift, good, lower, Lift, two more, lower, lift, good, breathe, lower, lift. Okay, right leg up and back, right leg down dog. Go right to the bliss of your breath. Root down through your inner right thigh. Lift your left leg. Feel the inseams of both legs working really strong. Right leg to press into the floor. Tone your belly and left leg to lift. Okay, now turn your left hip open to the side and feel more stretch on the right inner thigh. Best you can, keep your shoulders mostly squaring towards the floor. Okay, and then you're gonna bend your left knee, bring your left knee to your left upper arm, take a pause, breathe. Okay, shift your left knee to center, hug it towards your heart, and then lower it to the ground, just hover it off the floor, pull your belly towards your spine, round your back like cat pose, lift. 
Okay, four more. You can exhale as you go down. Inhale as you pull up, two more. Good. Down dog. Open your knees on your mat. Heels to, uh, hips to heels, child's pose. If your heart rate is up, see if you can mindfully slow your heart rate down. Okay, we'll come back up, downward facing dog. Okay, root down through your right foot, lift your left leg, and then draw your left knee forward and see if you can slowly, mindfully place your left foot between your hands. I'm gonna put a block near the front edge of my mat. If you have one, you might do the same. Okay. And then from here, I'm gonna bring hands to heart, lean into my left leg and lift the right. So I'm in warrior three, we've been here before. Now I'm gonna bend my left knee, hover my whole body as parallel as possible over the floor, and then press up. Okay, exhale to lower. Press up. Exhale to lower. Press up. Are you breathing in the wings of your kidneys? Up. Good, okay, draw your right knee towards your chest, pause, place your right foot to the floor. Here, tone your belly back, tailbone heavy, reach the arms up. Hands to heart as you exhale. Okay, we're gonna try a little more on that left leg. I'm gonna use my block now, setting that forward that's going to be my right hand block, okay? I'm going to send my right foot back just like warrior three, and I'm going to take my right hand down to the block. So I'm a fan of using a block. Um, I can reach the floor, but what happens then is that my torso is tilted towards the ground instead of parallel to the earth. And so my experience here when I'm tilted towards the floor is that I'm generally overstretching my left hamstring. So I'll use a block to bring myself up so my spine's more parallel to the ground. Okay, squeeze your inner thighs together and start to twist your chest to the left. If it's okay for you, can you reach that left arm to the sky? This is a big pose, a super challenging pose. We'll just say one more breath, breathe into the wings of your kidneys. Good, bring your feet together, front of your mat. Lengthen halfway forward. And then reach your sit bones towards your heels, activate your hamstrings and come up to stand. Hands to heart as you exhale. Okay, let's take our hands to the floor and you can walk back to a downward facing dog. I'm gonna turn on my mat and do that the other way. From your downward facing dog, lift your right leg and then step your right foot through. Can you place it mindfully, gently top of your mat? On your inhale, come on up. I'm placing my block towards the left edge of my mat. And I'm gonna bring my hands to heart and then lean my weight. I might even step that back foot in a little bit. Lean my weight into the right foot, lift the left leg up. Now, can I broaden through the back body? So breathe through the wings of the kidneys again. That's what's gonna keep us floating here. And I'm gonna bend my right knee and press, good, bend the right knee, press, good, three more, 
And exhale as you go down. Inhale as you go up. Try to keep the integrity of the pose. Last one. Good. Bring that left foot through. Place your foot to the ground. Inhale, reach the arms up. Let your back body feel full. This almost might feel like a hollow body shape. Tone the belly towards your spine. Hands to heart as you exhale. Okay. Again, I'm going to root into my right foot. And I'm going to send my left foot back. Okay, from here, I'm going to lean forward. I'm finding my block. You do what you prefer. Okay, so I'm looking for my spine relatively parallel over the floor, left hip turning towards the ground. So this is a great beginner way to practice this pose is simply chest facing downward. If the mobility is there, to start to twist your chest to the right. And again, it's a very strong pose. Give it a try. If you want to lift your arm to the sky, maybe even that. Use your breath to rotate more. Good. Set your feet to the earth. Halfway lift. Take a deep fold if you like. Good, and then we'll place our hands to the floor and we'll step it back. Okay, so a plank pose. Again, keep the belly toned and then just lower your right knee to the floor. Try not to move your hips. Keep the back body full. Straighten your right leg, lower your left. Good, so can you move the knees in this position, keeping your core toned Keeping the rib cage relatively stable. Good. Right. Left. Right. Left. Okay, so just like before, we'll take Chaturanga. Um, beginner students, feel free to drop your knees to the floor. We'll lower. And then inhale your choice, maybe a high cobra. Maybe your knees come off the ground for upward facing dog. Can you breathe here into the wings of the kidneys, broad in the back? Good. Down dog. Nice job, you guys. If you're still with me, you're doing great. Okay, on an inhale, we're going to lift our right leg up. Exhale, place your right foot gently forward, top of your mat. Spin your left heel to the ground. This is another place where a block is appropriate inside of your right foot. If you don't have one, no worries. We're going to place our elbow to knee for side angle pose, right side. Block comes in, you can place your hand to a block. So now notice. Um, if the rib cage rounds or juts forward, knit the lower ribs in towards the spine. So feel that stability from the pelvic floor, from the low belly, and from the rib cage. Here too, lean your spine towards the right leg. Lean your spine towards the right long edge of your mat. Top arm can go straight up, or you can turn that arm over the ear as you like. See if you can let go of all the little things you know about the pose intellectually and just let yourself breathe the pose, right? That's where the present moment experience comes in. If I'm racking my yogi brain, listing off a long list of anatomical directions, right? It's a little more, um, I'm in more of a mental space rather than a feeling space. So let yourself be in a feeling space of this present moment experience. Good. On an inhale, let's come up, straighten that front leg, and then just reverse, reverse warrior. We're going to keep our front leg straight for this one. Your left hand could reach down your back leg, behind your back. 
I a lot of times reach it in front of my belly just as a reminder to stay toned. Good, bring your hands down. So again, I'm gonna use my block. We're gonna take a half moon pose. So I'm using my block for the same reason I explained in the twisted version of this, to keep my spine upright. I'm gonna lean into my right foot, touch my hand to my block if you're reaching the floor. That might be okay for you. Good, and I'm gonna fire up the inseams of both legs. Again, a tricky balance pose. If you're comfortable, your top arm can reach to the sky. And then what is this pose like when I really go to breathing into my back body and the wings of the kidneys? How does that change my experience of my body in the present moment? Right, our inhales should feel expansive. Our exhales kind of condensing or focusing towards center. Okay, see if in one fluid movement, can you step that left foot to the back of your mat, place your hands and shift your right foot back to a down dog. You might like to pedal out your feet here. And then you'll lift your left leg. I'm switching sides. You'll lift your left leg and step that left foot lightly forward top of your mat. Spin the right heel down. And then bend your left knee over the ankle. Okay, you can take elbow to knee. It's a pretty um, mild, beginner friendly version of this pose. You can bring your hand to a block. Some of you may be deeper than that. Try not to let this back inner thigh melt towards the ground. So there's a buoyancy in that back inner thigh. I'm pressing into my feet and the inner thighs are lifting up away from the ground. Again, knit your low rib cage in. Focus on expansion in your back body rather than the front body. It's not that the front body shouldn't be expanding, it's just that it comes natural in this pose due to our position. So using our mindfulness to work the back body a little more should bring balance. Press through your feet, come on up. Straighten your left leg. Lift your left arm up to the sky, keep the belly toning in, and then lean back, exalted warrior, uh, with a straight front leg. You can touch your back thigh, or you could wrap your hand in front or behind of your belly. Good, bring your hands down to your heart. You might want to walk your right foot in a few steps. So again, I'm using my block for this pose. My block is about a foot forward of my left foot and slightly wide. Okay? So not directly in front of the foot, giving myself a wider base of balance. And I'm going to lift my right leg up. I like to think that this pose works from our inner thighs. So left inner thigh, like a tree trunk rooting into the floor. Okay, right inner thigh strong as it lifts up. Maybe top arm to the sky. Breathe into the back of your ribs. Welcome presence of mind into your pose. Good. Slowly, again, like in slow motion, turn your right hip towards the floor. Start to bend your left knee. Touch your hands to the ground. And then step back, down dog. Okay. 
Okay, let's take a pigeon pose. Step your right shin forward. Okay, if your right hip hovers high off the floor, you might set a block or a pillow underneath it. See that your left thigh is pointing straight at the floor. Okay, so if my left thigh had a line down the middle, that line would be pointing right at the ground. And here I'm gonna lean forward. Can you feel in your pigeon pose like your knees gently pull towards one another? So the right knee pulls slightly back and the left knee pulls slightly forward, like the femur bones plug into the hip sockets. So the legs maintain a little effort while we rest in a passive stretch, mostly passive. Have you imagined yet what the wings of your kidneys look like? <laughs> Maybe you imagine that now while we're still breathing into that place. Okay, we're gonna come on up. Lean into your right hip. I'm gonna turn towards you so you can see this. Lean into your right hip, sweep your left leg around, and then place your left foot outside of the right knee. All of a sudden we're ready for Ardhamatsi and Drasana. Your left sitting bone should be on the floor and not on your heel. Okay. Reach your right arm up with an inhale. Okay, and then we're twisting to the left on our exhale. Good. So let your first breath in the twist be the most mild. Right, poses develop as we stay. We give our body time to warm up into each pose. And it's not by wrenching with our arms that we go deeper, it's by breathing deeper. So I invite you to your breath again here. And notice what happens in a twist when you exhale completely, pull the belly button in, pull the pelvic floor up at the end of your exhale. What happens at the end of the breath? You can go ahead and unwind, okay? Turn your hands to the front of your mat, step back. Feel free to take a full vinyasa here if you like, or we'll just meet up in down dog. From your down dog, step your left shin forward, pigeon pose. Again, if your left hip hovers, place a block underneath it. Okay, I'm gonna turn my right hip towards the floor. The center of my right thigh is pointing straight down. And then I'm gonna lean in. Again, can you pull your knees towards one another? So my femur bones, my upper leg bones are plugging into the hip socket. So there is some engagement in the pose. Enjoy breathing into those kidney wings. Maybe your kidney wings are rainbow colored or white or black, but what do you feel? What do you notice there? Go ahead and lift up. Sit into your left hip, lean to the left side, and bring your right leg around. Okay. Set your right foot outside of your left knee. See that your right sitting bone is on the floor, not on your heel. Lift your left arm up. So inhale, lengthen, and then exhale to twist in your pose. Remember your first breath in the pose will just be the most mild version of the pose. 
Let it develop breath by breath. There's no rush. There's no forcing. Let your breath do the work. And again, I'll ask you to investigate what happens at the end of a deep exhale when you pull your belly back and you draw your pelvic floor in and up. Maybe you even pause your breath out for a second after the exhale. What happens to your twist right there? The breath is really magical, and my uh, Indian yoga teacher I studied with would tell us that we will get farther using our breath than we ever could by pushing or pulling our body into certain positions, right? So we can just kind of go to our comfortable edge and then really work with the breath and start to see what happens. Okay. Let's lie down. Place your feet underneath your knees. Tuck your shoulders underneath your back. We're just gonna do one bridge pose. Okay, scoop your tailbone towards your heels. Feel free here to clasp hands underneath you. Lift your chin away from your chest. Okay, and this is a glute and hamstring pose, so you should feel the glutes working. You can reach your sit bones towards your knees. The hamstring should feel activated. And to feel your hamstrings activate more, you can pull your heels towards your shoulders. Don't move them, just activate them in that direction. How are the wings of your kidneys here? And lower down, pull your knees to your chest. You can rock around here if it feels good, or you can just take a pause. Okay, I've got about three minutes, I think, before this uh, IG Live class ends, but we're gonna extend our left leg, reach the right leg to the sky for a hamstring stretch. You can grab your toe or grab the back of the thigh. We won't be here too long. Good, slowly lower the right leg, switch sides. It's okay for your low back to have its little curve here off the floor. Press the sacrum into the ground, but the lumbar spine can have its curve. Good, lower that down. Okay, if you'd like to bring the soles of your feet together here, you can for a Supta Baddha Konasana. So feel your hips on the ground here, let the knees be heavy. And in a really focused practice like we did today with this internal focus and focus on breath sensations and moving slowly, Hopefully, we've grounded the mind into a place where it's relatively calm and quiet. And if that's the case, just enjoy that now. Right? The whole goal of our yoga is to bring ourselves to a quiet mind. So just notice any stillness or silence you feel in the mind now. And let that stillness really bring a joy, right? That stillness and that peace is our true nature. And 
we'll draw our hands down alongside of the thighs. Let your knees come to center. And then before we rest in Shavasana, let's open the feet wide and let your knees fall together to touch. So we'll just take a counter pose in this way, broadening the sacrum on the back and letting the inner thigh muscles rest. When you're ready from that place, stretch your legs out for Shavasana and take a full rest. And so I will leave you here to rest in Shavasana. I like to take a anywhere from a five to 10 minute Shavasana if I have the time. So I invite you to take a good, long, deep rest. Uh, thanks again for joining me today. Um, more classes are being posted on this YouTube channel weekly, so don't forget to check back soon. Uh, like and subscribe. Uh, also, these classes are free, of course. Um, if you feel so moved to make a donation for the yoga classes, you can do so on Venmo. It's at Soul Shape Yoga. I hope you have a peaceful day today. Thanks again for joining me. Namaste.